I can't believe I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, T. Rowe Price just dropped a bombshell, and I'm going to show you what the big fund manager thinks is going to happen, and we're going to put their claim to the test as something just unexpected happened in the U.S. economy, as you're about to see, that could change everything. Now let's go to Bloomberg, where he picked today's story up with that line, as the Fed risks a 1970s mistake of cuts rates too soon. This according to T. Rowe Price, the big fund manager, and that is the big fear that everybody has, including the Federal Reserve and all the other central elites around the world, is that inflation is going to come back in a big way. In fact, this is entrenched so much that even consumers believe it. But as you're about to see, I think the chance of that, well, is somewhere close to zero. Jerome Powell said very early on that he is a student of what happened in the 70s. If they go ahead and start cutting now, I think they're in danger of making the same mistake. In fact, in 1970s, the Fed East policy before inflation was fully vanquished. And that again is the fear that the Fed has not done enough to contain inflation. And they in fact may have to go on another cycle of raising rates. Many people believe this can happen. The reality is there is something that has now changed in the U.S. economy and it's happened in a big way. But let's put T. Rowe to the test here because let's talk about inflation in the U.S. because the consumer price index is highly correlated to gas prices. And here you can see the U.S. consumer price index in blue against U.S. regular all formations gas price in red, both shown on a year over year rate of change. Now, one thing many people are noticing here is that gas prices on a year over year rate of change are rising relative to the consumer price index. The problem here is that the consumer Consumers cannot afford higher prices at the pump. That is the issue here. We have a fact the economy cannot handle higher prices. And there's a lot of evidence of that because what really is driving inflation isn't so much gas prices because one of the underlying issues is if there isn't demand at higher prices, well, consumers just won't spend. The key part here is what drives spending. Well, that's wages. And let's take a look at total compensation because we know the Fed and other political elites focus on average hourly earnings. And we've noted on the show that even in recessions, average hourly earnings goes up. But one thing that doesn't is weekly hours. So when we look at total compensation here, you see again against the consumer price index, now shown as total compensation is average hourly earnings multiplied by average weekly hours of production of non-supervisory employees. We can go back to the 70s and it becomes very clear what happened. You see the total compensation rose and with a lag, inflation followed. And then again, starting in the mid 70s, compensation started to rise and with a lag, Again, inflation followed. So if we are going to receive a repeat of the 1970s, well, then likely we would need to see the same thing. Now, on Friday, we're going to get the non-farm pay report, and that's where we'll get the latest update on weekly hours work. Because you can see very clearly the relationship here that when consumers have more money to spend, well, they do it, and that tends to drive inflation. But right now, there's no signs of a revival in total compensation. The trend is lower, and that means inflation highly unlikely to come back anytime soon. Now, Powell reiterated last week that the U.S. Central Bank isn't in any rush to cut rates as policymakers await more evidence that inflation is slowing. The feel said he was never too optimistic about rate cuts the market had priced in. T. Rowe Price, again, the big fund manager, said dramatically neutral is their position between stocks and bonds. He does not still think that there's some benefit from diversification with bonds and add that having a real asset sleeve within a portfolio portfolio is worthwhile. So what we're hearing from T. Rowe is that they think, yes, you still should be diversified. Of course, it makes sense. They're a mutual fund manager, but they're pointing to tilt toward commodities. Now, in the short term, that can play out really well. But what if inflation comes down? Can we see commodity prices rise? Will the big fund manager be right? Well, we'll put that to the test here in a moment because they do think commodities are interesting. And within our equity portfolios, we're overweight energy, and that could be a dangerous dangerous move, but can you make money trading commodities? You can. In fact, today I put out a video to my subscribers for both reports, but I think is going to be a huge trade. In fact, I want to show you a recent one. This was on Global X Uranium ETF.
ETF symbol URA on 37. Our report that looks at machine positioning that gets an early lead on things. That trade came out on 37. If you would have invested 5,000 bucks on the trade, you'd be up 7.69% as of close of business yesterday. That's 384 bucks. That's six months of subscriptions right there alone. If you were on our momentum time pro report that looks at those technical signals and smooths them out, makes them easier for you, you'd be pocketing three months of trades and that doesn't count where this thing's gone today. Let me show you because as of today, uh, it's up another 3% at the time we filmed. Here you can see those when we flagged the signals on reports and since then it took a little dip and now it's off to the races we show you it's easy to get these reports and pay for a whole year subscription with one trade you can see it right now and again i just showed both subscribers to the reports what i think is the next biggest trade again machine positioning that's our cta time pro we show you the dislocations how to get in before the machines start to make a big move you're a technical trader you find yourself getting in late out early we'll fix all that for you with our momentum time pro links in the description for both my buddies are upset because they keep giving you 30 days to try this thing because in 30 days i know you can make a ton of money that uranium trade is only 30 days old you can make money trading we will show you how but one thing the fed doesn't understand is how inflation works because here we can go now and look at the consumer price index against spot crude oil prices this is west texas intermediate and this is what baffles me about what t row price is saying because you can clearly see the link to inflation had two components one rising total compensation as i showed you the other had everything to do with energy you look at now we're not seeing a big move in the energy sector in fact what i think is going to change in the near-term future as we get past this holiday season where we tend to see a lot of gasoline usage is the fact that consumers can't afford to spend on the discretionary side of the economy and on energy something has to give in a big way and of course this all comes down to what consumers can afford and now we look now at total compensation we'll switch that over into blue against crude oil prices this west texas intermediate and red and you'll note in times of rising total compensation what what happened is crude oil prices tend to follow sometimes very quickly sometimes with a lag and simple because when consumers have more money again they spend it and of course that means our economy heavily fueled by energy that price tends to go higher so here we have a case where total compensation growth historically still very high but the downward trend suggests consumers cannot afford higher prices including higher energy prices at the same time this is a dangerous deal the only real problem here isn't that we're going to see a revival of inflation the question is what happens to commodities that t-row price is betting big on well based on the data we're seeing if if total compensation growth continues to fall that means demand for energy is going to go with it and if t-row is overweight well watch out below but one thing the Fed isn't watching out for is, well, rate cuts. Here we see Bostic expects one rate cut this year, not until the fourth quarter, he says. But what could change that? Well, I'll show you. He's not even going to believe it. I think it would be appropriate for us to start moving down the end of this year, the fourth quarter, in referring to the federal funds rate. If that trajectory slows down in terms of inflation, then we're going to have to be more patient than I think we many have expected. And this is really the case where the Fed believes they over tighten. They did that intentionally. Now, I'm going to show you a chart here in a little bit of why the Fed made a huge, huge mistake during the pandemic and they're playing catch up at the detriment to the U.S. economy. But what I want you to believe is what the Fed is telling you is they went too far and they're gonna to have to pull back a little bit. The problem right now is they're not sure when that is. They're also not sure what could change their view in a big way. Bostic said inflation hasn't moved very much of late, which is, well, actually correct. And then he's concerned by some secondary measures in the price figures, suggesting that inflation may just hold at this level for a little while longer. But we have evidence mounting this is not likely. And while he isn't hearing many of the cracks in employment from his contacts, he signaled a negative turn in the labor market could impact his call for just one cut. And that's what makes this interesting, because the labor market is likely the next thing to go.
I'm going to make that case and why you'll see the Fed doesn't understand that the labor market is the next shoe to drop. He said if employment starts to degrade, well, then I'll have to take that on board. You will in a big way, Bostic, because it's not going to be long before the U.S. labor market follows the rest of the world. Now, I want to show you the mistake the Fed made because when we look at total compensation, again, this is average hourly earnings multiplied by average weekly hours of production and non-supervisory employees. This shown in blue against the federal fund rate. In fact, if you're looking at this chart, you see, wow, there's actually a reasonable correlation to that, that as demand goes down in terms of total compensation growth slowing, well, what does the Fed have to do to juice the economy? They lower rates and it makes perfect sense. As people's paychecks shrink relative to the economy, you've got to lower rates so they can keep spending. But look what happens during the pandemic. You'll notice that the relationship here is reasonably well, and it all changes. You see total compensation growth jumps, of course, due to stimulus spending, and the Fed stays at zero. Now they're playing catch up. What they should have done is raise rates, and they should be gradually trimming them now. Instead, they are in a position, and Boston can't see it, that they're going to completely choke out the U.S. labor market. That's their next move. And the evidence of that is rel rel relatively clear because as we've noted that during even recessions, average hourly earnings goes up. One thing that doesn't is weekly hours work. And this is really simple because I want you to understand if an employer is cutting hours, that means they don't have enough demand. If you cut enough hours, well, you send people home and tell them they lost their job. And that's why we see continued claims stay at the level they're at. Now, they can stay at the current level for a while. If the longer people are on unemployment, the less they will spend. Here you can see these downward trajectories in total compensation as shown in blue against continued unemployment claims in red. And what we're seeing is the early sign that as, of course, the economy slows and total compensation growth declines, that unemployment is going to increase that means Bostic you got it wrong one cut by fourth quarter probably a whole lot more before we even get there because U.S. companies now added 184,000 jobs in March, this according to ADP. So as we look at payrolls now, what we're seeing is it looks fairly good, but the problem is we continue to be on a decelerated trend. Everything is as if the plane is coming in slowly for landing. And what we're going to find out, there's going to be a lot of turbulence along the way as wage growth continues to accelerate for those who change jobs, raising 10% from a year earlier. Of course, this will have those central elites panicking that inflation is coming coming back because this was the largest advance since July. Workers stayed in their jobs, saw 5.1% median pay bump in March from a year ago, unchanged from last month. And they note, according to ADP, that inflation has been cooling, but our data shows pay is heating up in both goods and services. And that can happen because, of course, if employers are cutting hours, they can make it up by giving people wage increases. The largest pay gains for job changes were in construction, financial services, and in manufacturing. But you can see the relationship, again, between total compensation and the total non-farm pay private payroll employment report this being from the ADP generally the relationship here is as total compensation grows slows the need for employees goes down as well as we've been making the case here we can see though but what is something that's changing in the U.S. economy is the services sector and we continue to hear that the services sector was going to lead the manufacturing sector out of the slump we've seen a little bit of a turnaround at least specifically in the U.S. manufacturing sector here as of recent but what now is changing the unexpected has hit the services sector and this is not a good sign as US services growth cools as price gauge drops to a four-year low now this doesn't make sense because of price growth in the services sector is falling well, that's disinflation and demand of services. Well, that should be rising. That means unemployment claims likely to tick higher here. The index of prices paid for materials and services decreased more than five points to 53.4. So still expanding just at a slower pace, now the lowest since March of 2020. That stands in stark contrast to the ISM data earlier this week, showing a manufacturing input cost gauge climbed to the highest level since July of 2022 suggesting the pace of goods deflation is leveling off. Well, the manufacturing sector is much more keyed to the price of oil. Of course, we noticed that it's been heading higher here recently. So yes, we are gonna see input prices in the manufacturing go up. The question always comes back to one simple thing. Can consumers afford higher prices 
based on the fact that their paychecks are shrinking, at least that's what the data is showing us, the answer is no, and that's not good from a demand side of the economy. But as we zoom into the services sector, what do we know? That new orders growth is slowing, it's still expanding, but expanding at a slower pace. How about this? The backlog of orders is contracting. This is con this is dangerous. It was literally spinning its wheels last month. Now it's contracting new orders that up a little bit. But what you're starting to see here is a trend where there isn't enough new orders grow and new export orders to offset the decline in backlog because employment is now contracting for the second month in a row so bostic says look he sees no sign of problems in the labor market adp says there's no problem but we're continuing to see inside these factory surveys and regional fed surveys that employment demand is weakening and a lot of this has to do with those backlogs going away and that it all feeds back to total compensation because if consumers don't have the money and they don't have access to credit they don't spend and sure enough here we can take a look at the philly fed this is a diffusion index for the manufacturing sector we don't have data on the services version but this gives you a perspective when you see total compensation rising well that usually is good news for the factory sector now there are cases as we've highlighted here where the factory sector can lead the economy in terms of total compensation that doesn't happen very often many are hoping it's now the question is will it pay off is the manufacturing sector right here or are consumers completely tapped out well in the eurozone well things have gotten ugly and remember we're a globally synchronized economy now what happens in other places eventually will hit home as eurozone inflation unexpectedly eases boosting rate cut case this is dangerous we talked about in yesterday's show how this could lead to a destabilization of global currencies when currencies go you get financial crises this is dangerous stuff will the ecb respond well consumer price growth in 20 nations sharing the euro currency slowed to 2.4 percent remember the target is two so this is right on path underlying inflation closely watched by the ecb to gauge the durability of price pressures meanwhile fell to 2.9 percent and 3.1 coming below expectations so this suggests as as we've noted inflation is cooling up now not so much here yet in the u.s but remember where everything else happens in the world it will get here as meeting next week the central bank is expected to acknowledge the improved outlook the policymakers are unlikely to cut rates straight away mainly because they need the fed to cut if they cut now they're putting the rear risk of the dollar rally the euro getting crushed and that will have devastating effects for the yuan and the yen that are already at critical le levels now looking to go lower talk about financial crisis brewing and they're saying this having a pretty pointing to the june as the next crucial meeting for policy this is why investors see almost no chance of a cut on april 11th but it fully priced in a move by June, followed by another two or three later this year. Of course, what they're not pricing in is currencies getting crushed and kicking off an all-out financial crisis. This is one case where we see, I think, T-Row Price has got it wrong. You weigh in the comments. What do you think? Is their bet on commodities right? Do they got this nailed? Do they think we're going to see, of course, the Fed stay higher for longer? Or do you think the Fed's going to be cutting when the labor market goes in a matter of months? I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.